Support for this episode is provided by CMT Orange Tools. Precision router bits, saw blades, drill bits, and more. Learn more about CMT Orange Tools at cmtorangetools.com. So last time we were together, John, we were obviously at the job site. Now we're back at our yard where all the beautiful material came back to. Um, so pretty much in front of us here is a whole bunch of the 3x8s and all the floor joists. We try to keep it as organized as possible because uh, that's always... It's always a tough thing with doing what we do with different size, you know, pieces and different species and everything else. Um, so for this particular barn, we wanted to keep everything from that barn together. So here we are. Let's right walk back. back there. So this this is not from Mendham. The stuff with the paint on it, but all these big, larger hewn timbers are not. This is actually from a barn out in Pennsylvania that we just recently did. Uh, but you can see here, even this, uh, I'd probably say that's about a seven by nine with the white paint. And that whole row through there is all beautiful chestnut. You can see with the mineral streaks, it's real, real dark. Um, and then everything else in the back here as well. This is all from Mendham. This is all from Mendham. So you can see the, the stuff with the white, the milk paint on it, that was from where, you know, the, the ground level, because uh, it was a bank barn. That's where the cows would have been and the milking stations were. And then everything else that's brown was, uh, you know, was above grade and, and up. And the milk paint is because it was on the floor? Yeah, so I mean, typically it, lime and cow's milk, that's supposedly the recipe from back in the day. It, it keeps the bugs away and all of that stuff. So also keeps things cleaner where the milking stations were down on the ground level. Um, so this this was only the one bundle from there, luckily. It was, the milk paint's tough. We either have to pressure wash it or we just use the inside of the material. Typically, we'll, it's very... It's tough to salvage the original face and have a beautiful brown patinaed side like what we got here from the unpainted material. Because it seals the material? Yeah, it, it always has that kind of white chalky, white chalky consistency and it gets real deep down into the, you know, into the wood and the grain and the pores of the material and it's... More than an eighth of an inch? Um, I mean, it, I wouldn't say more than an eighth of an inch, but you always, it's very light. You're not going to have that dark brown oxidized nice patina that typically we go for. Um, if we pressure wash it off, it's almost kind of washed out, a little bit whitewashed almost. It's nice for a beach house or something like that, but we like the darker stuff, personally. So, we just came in from the yard, different material, but same process. This material here is destined to be flooring. Um, it's getting denailed, stacked and stickered so that we get the air circulation between the boards so everything dries evenly in the kiln. And of course, kills all the bugs, most importantly. So after here, John, it goes into the kilns, and then we have a small one here, but I'll show you the one outside, and at least we can take a look inside of it. So here we are, kiln number two. We'll just open it briefly. You have to kind of overstack it, just to make, uh, you know, yeah, make use of every cubic inch we got. So we got a whole bunch of oak and some hand-hewn timbers in there. Right now, the temperature's about 130 degrees. You can feel it. Oh, it, it's warm. It is warm. So it'll stay at this for about another week. And then from there, we'll start, the, you know, uh, sl slowly raising up the temperature up to about 160 degrees, which will stay at that for 48 hours. Now, is this gas or electric? All electric. All, All the electric. heat is electric. Yep. And yeah, you keep the fan circulating. Exactly. So the, that's... That's where the importance of stickering the material comes into play. So you get that circulation with those fans is actually a baffle. I'm sure you could probably see it in the video. And then it constantly is just rotating the air inside. Um, so there's a heating element and then a, a big dehumidifier in essence. That pulls all the moisture out of the air. 130 degrees now? Right now. And what will it go up to? 160. 160. Yeah, so that's, that'll sterilize it. That will kill any bug. And that's the main thing, is to kill any yeah. bugs or bug larvae. Exactly, exactly. Scary thing, the powder post, 20 years, the larvae will lie dormant. So that's a long time when you really think about it. So one of my favorite parts here is being able to put one of these pieces through the planer and really remove that age and the tarnish and all that kind of old crud and really see how beautiful the material is underneath. So we got an extra piece here we'll put through the planer, get it cleaned up.
it's all strictly business, just, just cogs. This is some of the chestnut from end of all milled up and I'm just kind of in the, in the process of dry fitting everything, getting it all mocked up. Um, it's going to be an L-shaped bar. As you can see from, from the drawing here, we got about a 10 foot run and then I got to incorporate that 30 inch diameter round and we got to get it to them in three pieces and it'll be put together on site. Uh, so that's what we're doing now. I'm just squaring up all, all the joints where everything's got to line up. And then we'll, we'll dry fit, we'll sand it all, and then it's time for finish. What are you using for finish? They want to just go with a water base. So we'll do two coats of Zinzer sanding sealer, um, beautiful bullseye product. And then we'll just go four coats of water base on top. Nice satin finish, not overly shiny. Um, for a, a French, uh, French restaurant in, I believe, if I recall correctly, South Orange. This is the top? It is the top side, yeah. So this particular customer, they wanted a little bit more rustic, your nice warm, you know, nice warm browns. Uh, luckily with the chestnut, we're able to achieve that naturally without any, you know, adding any color. Um, some original saw marks and all of that. Now the beautiful part with the chestnut, it oxidizes beautifully and very deep over the years. Um, but if you did want to go with something completely different, this is the bottom side. Is that run through the time saver? Yeah. Yeah, this was put through the time saver. We're at 80 grit paper right now. Um, and we'll incrementally work our way up to 320. Huge difference. Big time. It's beautiful, but definitely doesn't have the same character. No. Beautiful nonetheless, totally different style though. And so how's this countertop going to work? So, the two longer runs are going to be joined at about an inch and a quarter section here. Um, and then we're going to be setting in this round top roughly right about there. Um, and it'll, it'll all be put together with dominoes on site. How are you making that cut? My thought with here, I was going to actually take a, um, the router with a nice flush trim bit, make a jig, because it's just a 30 inch diameter out of um, some 13 ply Baltic birch. And then obviously I'll have to add on that half an inch for the diameter of the router bit. And then I should have the exact, you know, exact radius. And I was going to set that template on. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm hoping for. I'm it's not gotta, looking forward to it. <laughs> it's got to be good. It's got to be good. It's stressful. It'll work out. Oh, yeah. You can't go wrong. Can't go wrong with a flush cut bit. No. <laughs> so that's, that looks like it's brand new. Brand new. And so that's ready for the job. Having a hard time focusing here. This round, did you cut this out on the bandsaw or use a router? I used neither, to be honest with you. Um, I actually cut it out on the panel saw here. We made a jig. You can actually see on the bottom, we got our center hole. And if you want to follow me over to the saw, I'll show you how we did that. So originally we started out with a 36 by 36 inch square. Plopped on the square and then Luckily with the panel saw, we got the slide. So very carefully we cut the corners off. And then we kept on cutting off the high spots, rotating the piece cut after every cut. And then before you knew it, our, our pivot is 15 inches from the blade. So you've got a screw right here. Yep. So that goes into our, our little center hole, pilot hole if you want to call it that. And then we are able to slide Slide the saw up, and then just slowly spin the blade, you know, slowly spin the tabletop around, and that squares it up. One, two, three. That's a nice, that's really nice. That's the finished side. That's the finished side there. That's beautiful. All right, well, I'm looking forward to seeing this installed. Absolutely, that makes two of us. <laughs> You're looking forward to getting that round cut yeah. down on the other side. <laughs> I know the feeling, man. Oh, I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, dude. Thanks a lot, man. You got it. I'll see you. Good seeing you, John. Okay, so that was the last episode in the Mendham Barn series. I hope you enjoyed this series. For me, it was a lot of fun to see 
the whole process of the barn intact, then the barn being dismantled, and finally the wood from the barn being milled and turned into projects. And of course, the project that Anthony was working on when I left turned out perfect. I never had any doubts. Uh, he sent me a pictures and of course I'll put them up right now, uh, but a, a perfect fit. And if you want to see how that project turned out installed, be sure to follow me on Instagram. They're gonna send me a few pictures and I'll be sure to share them on Instagram. And I'll also tag Real Antique Wood. So if you're not following Real Antique Wood, definitely check them out as well. And if you didn't see part one or part two of this series, be sure to check those videos out and I'll have links in the description. As always, thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time.